Seafood Nicholas here. Um, I got Justin with me. We're going to break up some of the stuff that people have been doing with Tai Chi that's completely wrong. So this is why Tai Chi does not work when it comes to fighting a boxer or, or, or kickboxer. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate what you would typically see in a Tai Chi class or seminar, okay? So I'm going to have this per person uh, put their jab out. Just hold your jab out. So this is what you see. Then they get to explaining it. We're going to use a movement called ward off left just for, just for the sake of uh, breaking the movement down. So this is what you would see. You would see, all right, we're going to take the fist here, and then I'm going to break the arm, or I'm going to throw the opponent. That's ward off left. Watch. So it looks like this. Boom. Just like that. Or this way you see it so you can see it. That's the move, and that's how it would be broken down. Do it one more time. Hold it out there. Boom. So... Boom, bang. That's how it's broken down in the form. This is why it doesn't work in a fight. Just jab, let me try it. It, it doesn't work in a fight because the jab is gonna be quick. If I have no perception on speed and timing, I cannot apply that. He wasn't, how fast were you going? Not very fast. <laughs> Not very fast. <laughs> And, and I'm trying to apply all this complicated movement to that one aspect of a jab, a simple jab. He didn't do a cross, he didn't do any other strikes, just kept it simple. If he were to do multiple strikes, my face would be damaged. So that is why a basic breakdown of Tai Chi movement does not work. You have to use elements of the Tai Chi movement and that will make a difference. Now, I will say that if I have my opponent hold out the punch, this is a phenomenal way to break down the strike, or to, sorry, to break down the technique for someone to understand where everything needs to go. It's a phenomenal way to break it down when you have someone hold it down so you can see the mechanics of how things are, but not for striking. It's for grappling or jujitsu, something that is more entangled rather than quick and snapping. This individual wants to punch me, and I'm doing that, I'm getting punched. Just no way around it. I can show you how to use Tai Chi parries and blocks and moves individually, but not big, massive moves to stop strikes like that. So, now I'm gonna show you guys how it actually can work if you're just in a grappling setting, and if you do use this in, in MMA, it would be for that entanglement if you're grappling or doing Jiu Jitsu. Um, so take, just, a simple look at one technique. It goes with a it goes with a million other techniques. We're gonna take a look at the arm the arm drag. So if my opponent puts his arm right here just like this because we're entangled, I can now use those moves like this to to pull. And if he tries to stop it, I can open it up and pull again using that same technique that ward off left. Now you see it in application. You see it moving. So we'll do it, we'll do it again. So if he puts his arm here, I can. Do these small circles, boom, and he tries to stop it with the other arm, so I open it up, boom, and I can arm drag. Using that for jujitsu and that entanglement makes more sense. If Justin wants to hurt me with fists and throwing fists and I'm trying to do all these big moves, I'm creating too many opportunities for him. That's what a boxer and that's what a kickboxer wants. And if you as a Tai Chi person are, tra are training Tai Chi and you want to fight with it, you have to learn other striking arts. The basics, the strikes, the jabs, the cross, the hooks. You have to know the basics, the kicks, because you will not be able to defend against it if so. Okay, and I just have to show an extra example showing that, you know, because he only struck at me with a jab, so I can see if there's people saying, well, it was only a jab, but you, you didn't have an opportunity to get that in there. All right. He can throw whatever strike he wants. I'm going to try to do my ward off or any Tai Chi application to stop him from punching me. When I grab him, I'm just one hand. I want to stop him from punching me in the face. I've instructed Justin he can hit me in the face at 20%. I'll probably just leave before getting hit. All right, I'll just run away. But I want you guys to see what happens. So I'm going to try using just Tai Chi principle. Okay. They don't work. <laughs> These big moves I'm trying to do, they don't work. They might make him a little skeptical of coming in, 
but they don't work for grasping my opponent and paralyzing an arm or stopping him and neutralizing an arm. This is a prime example from the MMA vs. Tai Chi why this does not work. You have to learn the basics. If I'm gonna face, if I'm gonna face Justin, I need to at least know when he's striking, I'm gonna parry, I'm gonna rotate, and then I'm gonna come in and close the distance because that's where Tai Chi's gonna make the difference is if I'm in and I'm grappling. So we'll do it. Go ahead. Now I'll close the distance. I can knee, I can elbow, I can get in. Way better. Way better than trying to do all these big fancy movements. You're using small things like the jab, just a little parry, so he's not jabbing in my face. I'm using that small circle. I don't have to be tense, I don't have to be a boxer, I don't have to be super strong. I can still use my Tai Chi, but I'm using the small aspects of the Tai Chi, the rotations, the little movements, the transitions of the movements, so I can get in and have a better opportunity of doing that. Just basics, all right? Thank you guys very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.